guys! Welcome to Historical Gossip. In this channel, we do what humans have done best since we've evolved to be a super aware being. Gossiping! Hello guys! Have you ever pondered whether in a bizarre time in history, it was a customary practice to pee and poop at the dining table? Well, today we dive into the Roman dining customs, delving into the extravagant habits of the ancient Romans. We will focus on the dining experiences of the elite in Roman society, where we find the highest degree of extravagance. Their approach to meals resembled Anglo-Saxon traditions, a hearty breakfast, a midday snack and an early dinner. This had the added benefit of concluding the meal before darkness fell as electricity did not exist and all activities were conducted in daylight. We'll also discuss the occasional exceptions to these dining habits with some lavish banquets lasting days and some crazy hygienic habits. Social dining and extravagance. In Roman society, feasting was a privilege enjoyed by only a select few. This elite minority, driven by their affluence and the social importance of banquets, embraced a culture of excess when it came to dining. Overindulgence wasn't just an option, it was practically mandatory. Failing to do so might suggest a lack of gratitude for the host's offerings with undesirable consequences. These extravagant banquets were hosted regularly, occurring two or three times a week, and they could stretch on for six to eight hours. Attending one of these feasts was akin to participating in multiple weddings every week and it was considered a great honour to be invited. Guests even had the liberty to bring uninvited companions, although these additional guests were initially required to sit in chairs like children, eventually women were allowed to recline alongside the other guests. The dining experience itself was quite unique. Guests dined while lying down, propped up on their left elbow. Food was consumed with the right hand, eliminating the need for utensils as the dishes were already finely cut. This distinctive dining posture and approach may seem unconventional to us, but were considered elegant and superior by the Romans. It allowed them to savour their meals and engage in social interactions while embracing the opulence of their feasts. The Triclinium and Entertainment the dining room, called the Triclinium, was distinctively set up with a low, circular table at its centre. Surrounded by three couches arranged in a U-shape, guests found amusement in sharing jokes, clever quips, poetic verses and philosophical conversations. These banquets were nothing short of spectacles. They featured musicians, acrobats, jesters and dancers. The presentation of food was often theatrical, sometimes to the point of absurdity. For instance, they dressed up calves with helmets between their horns, and a slave would pretend to be Ajax cutting meat with a sword. A large number of slaves and servants attended to various tasks, from welcoming guests to managing specialised roles like the scissor, responsible for carving meat, and the triclinarch who decided on wines and their dilution with water. The extravagance of these banquets was not just in the food, but in the entire experience, where entertainment and culinary artistry merged into a singular event. Evolution of dining roles. Guests at these banquets were categorised into a precise hierarchy following Roman conventions. Many of these roles did not exist in the early days of Rome when women prepared and served dinners, often with a sacred significance. However, as luxury became prevalent in Rome, external personnel were gradually employed and women, no longer having specific duties, began participating as guests, as was already the case in Etruria. Etruscan women were considered luxurious and extravagant, and this influence further shaped Roman dining practices. Sumptuous feasts and exotic delicacy Romans enjoyed copious amounts of food and the courses seemed endless. They began with appetizers like eggs, olives, cheeses and fish, often accompanied by honeyed wine. The first courses featured meat seasoned with rich sauces, while the second courses included desserts and fruit. Despite drinking wine throughout the meal, it ended with commissario, a mixture of wine, water and spices to prevent drunkenness, 
While dining, guests could marvel at various performances and engage in discussions. Upon parting, the host would gift guests with small items like ointments, oils and fragrances as mementos of the banquet, exotic and unconventional fare. Roman cuisine was all about creating amazement. This led to the creation of dishes that could astonish even the most adventurous eaters. Picture a platter featuring a family of stuffed sow's udders, surrounded by tiny pastry-suckling pigs, or perhaps sea urchin-filled pig udders, heron tongues glistening with honey and boar cleverly shaped to resemble fish. They even had a knack for disguising one type of meat as another, like crafting pork into the appearance of birds. The Romans had a taste for animals that might seem unusual today, and their approach to food was nothing short of theatrical. They prized exotic ingredients like murinae and weren't shy about adding camels, giraffes and horses to their culinary repertoire. It was a world of flavours that aimed to surprise and delight the senses, leaving diners with a truly unforgettable experience. Roman tastes, sweet, savoury and pungent. The Romans had a unique way of tantalising their taste buds. They had a fondness for the interplay of sweet and savoury flavours, often bringing them together in harmonious combinations. Imagine fruits mingling with meat and fish, with honey frequently lending its sweetness to the mix, layering one flavour upon another to craft entirely new taste sensations was a culinary art they mastered. Aromas and spices were the secret weapons in their flavour arsenal. They didn't just enhance the taste, they also served as a smokescreen for the sometimes less pleasant odours of meat and fish, given the absence of refrigeration. It was a symphony of flavours and scents that the Romans orchestrated, creating a dining experience that engaged all the senses. Roman table etiquette and eccentricity Roman table manners were quite outlandish when viewed through a modern lens. Forget forks. They were strictly kitchen tools. The Romans embraced the art of hand-to-mouth dining. Food was thoughtfully pre-cut into bite, sized pieces or chunks making it ready for direct consumption. Knives and spoons made cameo appearances when needed, perhaps for the extraction of shellfish or other specific tasks. Meals could be a bit of a messy affair thanks to the extravagant sauces and condiments in use. Frequent hand washing was a necessity, and that's where the ever dutiful slaves came into play. They poured water over the guests' hands, ensuring they were pristine and then drying them to perfection. To deal with the culinary chaos, guests would even switch their attire between courses just to keep things neat and tidy. It was a practical solution to enjoy their feast without looking like a complete mess by the end of it. Pooping, peeing and vomiting at the table. In the realm of dining, the Romans certainly danced to the beat of their own drum. What we might find peculiar today was often par for the course in ancient Rome. For instance, picture this. Belching wasn't just allowed. It was encouraged, seen as a sign of nobility and naturalness. Pass a bit of gas? No problem. Emperor Claudius even took it a step further, issuing a formal edict that essentially said, let it out at the dinner table after a guest's near fatal experience of trying to stifle it. Vomiting during meals was sometimes a strategic move to create space for further indulgence in feasting, furthermore. Since the floor was sloped outward, it was not uncommon for bodily waste, including feces and urine, to be expelled while the banquet was taking place with a basin or by simply gathering the soiled garments tossed onto the floor. Discreet servants would clean up bodily waste while the more affluent guests continued to feast, undisturbed as if nothing had occurred. But the surprises don't end there. After the grand banquet, Romans had a rather practical way of handling leftovers. They'd wrap them up in a napkin, a concept that would later evolve into the modern doggy bag. This leads us to contemplate the crazy transformations that food etiquette and customs have undergone throughout history. And you guys, do any of you eat like the Romans did or have any unusual eating habits? 